A very warm greetings to all our attendees once again. This is Rajneesh Chopra, the Global Head for Business Development for VA Tech Vabak Limited, a multinational having presence across four continents and over 30 countries, engaged in water and wastewater management and desalination for over nine decades. Today, this second Vabak webinar is on recycle and reuse based on a lot of requests from our earlier attendees that they would like to hear about Wabag's expertise in this particular field. As you all are aware that SDG 6, Sustainable Development Goal 6 of United Nations mandates water and sanitation for all by 2030. And given the fact that we have hardly 3% of the fresh water available across the globe. Water availability of fresh water, water security is definitely a major challenge across the globe today. And hence, it's imperative that we recycle and reuse every drop of water. I borrow words of our group CEO and MD who often says, water is too precious to be used once. Baba currently, is you know, recycling more than 2,200 million liters of water each day. It could be for various purposes. There are geographies where it is being used for agriculture. There are geographies where it is being used for industrial use. There are other places where it is being used for recharging the water bodies. And last but not the least, it is being used for direct portable reuse. Today, I have a very distinguished colleague of mine, Dr. Joseph Landsteiner, who will share his vast experience on recycle and reuse and would like to share his knowledge with you so that as a community of water professionals, we can benefit from him it, and enhance the water security for the planet. I will just give you a brief introduction of Dr. Joseph Landsteiner. He holds a master's in science and a doctorate in biotechnology from the Vienna University of Natural Resources and Applied Life Sciences. For more than 35 years, he has been involved in wide range of water, used water and water reuse projects. Currently, Dr. Lance Schinner is Technology Research and Development Director of VA Tech Wabak Group and is based out of Vienna in Austria. He has been a member of Vendok Direct Portable Reuse Research Committee since more than 15 years. A director on board for Vendok Ujams Industrial Water Reclamation Company since 10 years. Dr. Landstriner has been an active member of IWA Water Reuse Specialist Group Management Committee for more than 15 years. And since 2019, he has been serving as a chair of Water Resources Group of IWA. He's also a member of Water Reuse Working Group of the German Association of Water, Wastewater and Waste, and Vice President of IWA Austria. Furthermore, he serves as both editor-in-chief of the major reference work handbook of water and used water purification, published by Springer Nature, and as an editor of IWA Journal for Water Reuse. Given his vast credentials, I would request him to share his experience with all our attendees. And I'm sure you will find the session very interesting and very knowledgeable and would definitely benefit from it. Over to you, Dr. Joseph Lansteiner. Thank you, Rajneesh. I will give you a global presentation on water reuse from portable reuse to non-portable reuse. First, the outline. First, a short introduction. Then I will address portable water reuse. 
indirect and direct portable reuse projects, a global overview. Then I will talk about direct portable water reuse at Windhoek, Namibia, as special topics I will address contaminants of emerging concern or micropollutants and antimicrobial resistance. Um, in the field of non-portable reuse, I will address several case studies from secondary effluent reuse in, in Chennai, uh, reuse of treated industrial effluents in Windhoek, then uh, in the petrochemical industry in Gujarat, uh, then agricultural water reuse in the European Union, and last but not least, I will talk about urban and environmental water reuse at, in, in Saudi Arabia, and then I will draw some conclusions. The drivers for water reuse and recycling are first of all water shortage, which is caused by climate change, population growth, urbanization, industrialization in developing and emerging economies. There are of course economic reasons. Used water or wastewater is a resource, a drought proof resource. There's a lower freshwater demand. Imported water from distant sources can be very expensive. Uh, for example, in, in California, the imported water by the California aqueduct is twice as expensive as uh, portable reuse. Then there are reduced discharge and subsequently reduced uh, discharge fees. And there is re re resource recovery. There is a boost in water supply security. Of course, th this is also an, an economic reason, but it uh, can be also a political issue if drinking water, the drink drinking water supply is not secured. And in feasibility studies, uh, the supply security is not valued. That's very important, uh, should be done in the, in, in the future. Uh, policies, regulations and guidelines uh, are also important drivers. Uh, for example, the EU regulation on minimum requirements for water reuse uh, adopted in 2020. A, a, a policy, treated wastewater reuse policy for Tamil Nadu adopted in uh, 2019. And last but not least, um, a standard, the irrigation water quality standards of the Royal Commission Environmental Regulation, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 2015. Now I start with portable reuse with definitions. De facto unacknowledged or unplanned portable reuse occurs when water works draw raw water downstream from a used, uh, used water treatment plant. So the factory reuse occurs in many regions of the world. Planned portable reuse is publicly, publicly acknowledged as an intentional project to use recycled water for drinking water supply augmentation. Indirect portable reuse, IPR, involves blending of recycled water in an environmental buffer. That's the difference to DPR. Environmental buffer can be the aquifer or surface reservoir. It's blended with an aquifer before what the water is reused for drinking uh, purposes. Direct portable reuse, DPR, involves putting recycled water directly into a portable water supply distribution system. Portable water reuse is management of health risks. There are microbiological health risks from protozoan parasites, bacteria, virus, and um, the chemical health risks uh, are, for example, uh, disinfection byproducts, trihalomethanes, uh, carcinogenic, and also uh, nitrosodimethylamine, NDMA, also bromate. Then uh, there are contaminants of emerging concern, pharmaceuticals such as sulfamethoxazol, an antibiotic, diclofenac, painkiller, or uh, anti uh, drug, 
Personal Care Products, Poly and Perfluorated Alkyl Substances, PFAS, is a new hot topic and also antimicrobial resistance. The major indirect portable reuse IPR projects are in this slide. The first three are the most prominent one, Orange County Water District in California. They started already in 76. The Water, Factor, Water Factory 21 was a big pilot project in 2008. They studied up the groundwater replenishment system in Europe, in, in Torele, in Belgium. There's also a, a management aquifer recharge start up 2002 and Singapore is very well known, new water. They already have five new water plants. Other projects are Cloudcroft in New Mexico, Perth, Australia, groundwater replenishment started in 2017, San Diego, California. First phase is in the tendering stage, start up first phase 23. In India, Bangalore V Valley project has been postponed, but indirect portable reuse is also discussed for the mega cities of Delhi and Chennai. Indirect portable reuse schemes. We have a used water treatment plant, the reclamation plant, an advanced water treatment facility. The reclaimed water is blended in the Orange County case with the aquifer. So this is the environmental buffer. And then it's uh, abstracted and, and pumped to the community in Singapore. The environmental buffer is a surface, surface reservoir, uh, community used water treatment plant, uh, water reclamation plant, and the water is blended in the surface reservoir and then treated in a conventional water treatment plant. In Singapore, as you know, they have four national taps. It's rainwater, raw water, import from Malaysia, new water and desalinated uh, seawater. And here the, the, the used water treatment plant, they call water reclamation plant. They have an excellent water marketing terminology is very important in, in water reuse, especially in portable reuse. The reclamation plant, they call new water plant. It's a very good brand. The new water or reclaimed water is blended in, the, in this surface reservoir and then treated again in a conventional plant and supplied to the population. Uh, a relatively small amount, most of the new water goes to industry. Um, from the Changi new water plant, uh, a photograph of the RO, more than 200,000 cubic meters a day of permeate. Here a new water storage tank at Bedok. Here you can see this nice brand, new water. Um, as mentioned, they have an excellent branding policy, a visitor center, and here you, they start already. This is a visit from, I would say, uh, kids from a primary school. And we should start as early as possible. You see, I think these are kindergarten kids make every drop count. So portable, major direct portable, Reuse projects, Windhoek Namibia, I will, I will present in detail. The old Gorian Gap water reclamation plant was already started up in 68. It was a conventional process. In 2002, the new Gorian Gap water reclamation plant built by Wabak was inaugurated. Um, Beaufort West, a smaller facility in South Africa, Big Spring, started in, in, in Texas in 2013. Vichita Fall was just an emergency, emergency operation. One year in uh, May 15, I think uh, it was heavily raining and they switched from DPR to IPR, to indirect. El Paso, also in Texas, the full scale advanced water purification facility is in the design stage. Call for construction bits will be next year. Direct portable reuse schemes, Big Spring, Texas. 
We have the used water treatment plant, water reclamation plant, advanced water treatment facility. Then uh, the reclaimed water is blended here with surface water, treated again in a conventional plant and pumped to the community. In uh, Windhoek, it's a bit different. We have the used water treatment plant. Domestic used water is treated in a advanced multiple barrier system and the reclaimed water is directly pumped into the distribution system, blended with surface water and groundwater and supplied to the community. Windhoek, Namibia. Yeah, Namibia is in the southwest of Africa. Windhoek is in the central highlands of Namibia, flanked by the Namib. Namib Desert, Kalahari Desert, it's very dry. Annual rainfall is only 300, uh, 370 millimeters. Uh, the potential annual evaporation is, uh, is uh, 3,000 to 3,500 millimeters. The nearest perennial river, the Okavango, is 700 kilometers from the city. Altitude 1,600 meters above sea level. Uh, the, the city is 300 kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean, so seawater desalination would be expensive. Population in 21, nearly 450,000 inhabitants. Population grows 5% per year. And regular droughts and continuous shortage of potable water have necessitated to implement an integrated water demand management, including direct portable water reuse. Uh, I mentioned regu regular droughts. The last severe drought was in uh, six, 2016, 2017. This is in November 16. Uh, this is the main drinking water source, the from Bachdam water, which is treated in a conventional treatment plant. There is only 10% water left and uh, in uh, January 17 uh, they couldn't use this this water anymore the dam was empty and uh, Windhoek was supplied only by groundwater and reclaimed water so this is a simplified direct portable reuse scheme we have Domestic water, industrial wastewater is, is strictly separated in order not to pollute, pollute the domestic wastewater, which is the source for potable reclamation. Uh, first, we have a, the Gamam's switch treatment plant, the nutrient removal plant, the secondary effluent is, is polished by maturation ponds and the maturation ponds effluent are the source water for, for the new Goranga water reclamation plant. Um, and uh, 21,000 cubic meters a day are pumped into the distribution system and blended with groundwater and treated dam water. Of course, there have been concerns to portable reuse with regard to transmission of pathogens, including viruses, trace organics, and its potential toxic effects. There are aesthetic concerns and uh, in the beginning reliability of the employed treatment technology. Therefore, mult a multiple barrier approach is essential. There are three kinds of barriers, non-treatment barriers, treatment barriers, operational barriers. Non-treatment barriers, as I already mentioned, is the strict separation of domestic and industrial wastewater. Uh, the comprehensive monitoring of the switch treatment plant inlet, that means uh, source control, and the reclaimed water is blended with other sources, groundwater and treated dam water, and a maximum of 35% of reclaimed water in the network is permitted. Uh, treatment barriers, the gamma sewage treatment plant, the nutrient removal plant, maturation ponds for polishing, and then this advanced multiple barrier system the new Goranga water reclamation plant. Operational barriers, uh, additional treatment options, e.g. The, the dosing of powdered activated carbon in case of, of bad inlet quality, or switching to the recycling mode in case of inadequate inlet 
but also um, intermediate and outlet, outlet values. Here the gamma sewage treatment plant, it's called gamma water care works. Also Windhoek has a, a good water marketing, is using uh, very good uh, terms. That's very important in portable reuse. Um, instead of wastewater, used water, because it's, it's, it has much more positive connotations. Um, yes, in this slide, uh, maturation, a maturation pond section, the, the, the secondary effluent is polished here. And the maturation pond effluent is the raw water for portable reclamation. A very important parameter, dissolved organic carbon, approximately 14 milligrams per liter, then the protozoa chiadia and cryptosporidium in the range of 200 to 300 uh, per 100 liter. Another parameter, important parameter, is ammonia, which is approxi uh, approximately 1.795 uh, percentile. The project organization, there is a financing contract between the city, city of Windhoek and the European Investment Bank and the German Development Bank, KFW, its Kreditanstalt für Wiederaufbau. The EPC contractor was DP Thermal um, and, and Viadek Wabak. And there is an O&M contract, a private management agreement. It's a PPP project. It's for um, the, the, the term is 20 years. Originally, there were three shareholders, Berlin Water International, via the Quabag Veolia. Meanwhile, these are the two shareholders. Um, this PMA, Private Management Agreement, includes also as an integral part an agreement on research and development, training, capacity building, and knowledge transfer, mainly from Europe to the developing country, Namibia. And... Uh, Water issues in Namibia always have highest attention. The plant was inaugurated by the president of Namibia, Dr. Sam Nuyoma, in December 2002. The process, it's an, as, as mentioned, an advanced multiple barrier system, pre-ozonation for pre-oxidation, for pre-disinfection and microflocculation, then flo uh, coagulation, flocculation, the flocks are removed by dissolved air flotation, then uh, residual turbidity is removed by dual media filtration. Then we have main ozonation for main oxidation of e.g. protozoa, virus, main oxidation, main disinfection, uh, yes, and main oxidation of micropollutants, and also for DUC reduction. DUC is, is cracked and made bioavailable, and this, this bio, bio DUC, biodegradable DUC is removed by biologically activated carbon filtration. Residual micropollutants are removed by Activated carbon adsorption as final physical barrier. We have ultrafiltration, chlorine disinfection, and stabilization with sodium hydroxide. Here an aerial view. We have here the, the inlet works, preozonation, coagulation, dissolved air flotation building, dual media filtration, main ozonation, biologically activated carbon filtration. GSC, granular activated carbon filtration, ultrafiltration. There is a, also a research and development building. And here, the, the, in this building, is uh, the high lift pumps in order to, to pump the, the reclaimed water to the, into the distribution system. Ultrafil a photograph from the ultrafiltration unit. It's an inside out pressure driven polyether sulfon membrane cut off 40 nanometers. Here another view of the UF. Comparison of reclaimed water and treated dam water. The reclaimed water quality is, is superior as compared to the treated dam water. For example, turbidity 0.05 NTU 
Treaty 10 Water 0.6, Dissolved Organic Carbon 1.7, 3.6, the lower this TUC, the lower the trihalomethane tri formation potential, you can see here 35.73. Yes, um, in the research and development, uh, contaminants of emerging concern always has been an important topic since the beginning, since 2002, we are removing and monitoring and monitoring uh, micropollutants. <clears throat> we can summarize that after main ozonation, most contaminants are below detection limit. And typically, all contaminants are below the detection limit after granular activated carbon adsorption. Out of 25 pair and polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS, we did a screening. Only the, the perfluorooctane sulfonic acid PFOS, which is car carcinogenic, was detected in the, in the raw water, but it was, of course, uh, below the detection limit in the, in the final water. The data of the conventional analysis, such as UV254 absorption, provide a very good indication also for CC removal efficiencies. This pair, fluor pair and polyfluorinated alkyl substances, PFAS, are a widely used class of chemicals. There are more than 3,000 compounds on the market. They are used EG in the textile industry for water repellent and breathable fabrics. Uh, India has a lot of uh, textile uh, facilities, so I think it is also a topic, it will be also a, a hot topic in India. And uh, there are already standards, for, for example, in the EU drinking water directive and very stringent standards in the Californian uh, uh, regulation. It's the response levels for P4A, it's the octanic acid, it's only 10 nanograms per liter. For PFOS, it's 40 nanograms per liter. In the past, it was combined 70 nanometers. So it was tightened uh, this year. The Orange County Water District is conducting a large PFAS pilot testing program. And they have 10 pilot plants uh, in, the, in the district and uh, they are testing different GSEs, ion exchange and novel adsorbents. Uh, removal of pharmaceuticals in, in the new Gorean Gap water reclamation plant, diclofenac, for example, 480 in the raw water to 130 after pretreatment. And after you see after ozonation, it's, 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 not, uh, it's below detection limit. Uh, important is uh, sulfur methoxazole, uh, 3,600 nanograms in the raw water, 2,400 after pretreatment, below detection limit in the after main ozonation. Yes, and it's an, uh, sulfur methoxazole is an antibiotic, the, the, the main antibiotic in, in, which is used in, in Windhoek. And now I, I discuss antimicrobial resistance. So we have antibiotics, antibiotic resistant bacteria and antibiotic resistant genes. Um, if Bacteria come in contact with antibiotics. Uh, they become by mutations uh, resistant. And these genes can be trans transferred to other, other bacteria in, in, in the environment. And uh, these bacteria are then also resistant. So antibiotic resistance is not, on, not an isolated clinical but also an environmental problem through this transfer. And we can summarize antimicrobial resistance is a serious health, global health issue and is, de is detected in, in wastewater and used water, in soils, freshwater, food, and etc. Risk levels as associated with ARP, antibiotic resistant bacteria and antibiotic resistant genes 
have not been defined yet. Uh, WHO is working on that. Standardized methods for their quantification are, are under development and there is worldwide research. Uh, we, we checked antimicrobial resistance also in, in Windhoek and we can say antibiotic resistant bacteria and genes are reduced below the detection limit and main ozonation and ultrafiltration have the highest removal efficiencies. Here, uh, a slide for resistant bacteria. The dark columns are the resistant um, heteroblade counts and then coliforms. You see, after, after main ozonation, there are no resistant bacteria anymore. And of course, the clean water is free of resistant bacteria. So this this ozonation works very well. In the in case of the genes, we have a reduction in, in pretreatment after ozonation. There are no genes, resistant genes anymore. But BSC is a bioreactor and, and there are still um, resistant genes and also after GSC, but they are removed by ultrafiltration and also in, in the effluent and in the clean water, they are below the detection limit. So now I come to acceptance of direct portable reuse, the major reasons. There was no other choice due to severe water stress and lack of other cost-effective options, such as distant from um, transport from dis distant sources would have been much too expensive. Very important, since the beginning of direct portable reuse in 68, no outbreak of waterborne disease has been experienced and no negative health effects have been attributed to the use of reclaimed water. Other reasons, public trust has been established over, over a period of more than 50 years. In the old Korean Gap water reclamation plant, uh, they employed only a conventional system, but nevertheless, there, there was no outbreak and health problems. There is trust in the employed technology in process monitoring in operation and maintenance in water quality control and trust through participation in international research programs, EU programs, US programs. And it's also important uh, trust through the direct portable reuse technology and research committee. The the members are the city of Windhoek, the city lab, Wingok, the operating company, and the shareholders, that's Wabak and, and, and Veolia. Uh, the city of Windhoek has an excellent information policy, uh, excellent water education and water marketing, and water issues, as I mentioned, have highest political attention. Trust is increased as local staff is monitoring the, pro the, the, the process and also maintaining uh, the, the technology here, ultrafiltration maintenance. And we can say that the social, economic and environmental development of the city wouldn't have been possible without portable reuse. In 90, 1990, there were 140,000 inhabitants in 21, it's nearly three times of, of that figure, uh, nearly 450,000 inhabitants. Okay, this uh, Windhoek case will be a topic, a very important topic at the 13th IWA International Conference in, on Water Reclamation and Reuse in Chennai. We had to postpone uh, the conference for another year due to still uncertain uh, due to the still uncertain situation and um, it will be a pure physical event in, in January 23. Um, there will be three or four papers on Windhoek. The conference is 
organized by the IWA Water Use Specialist Group and the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry. I would cordially invite you to attend this conference. And the next case will, will also be a big topic in this conference. It will be showcased. There will be technical visits to the Koyambedu water reclamation plant. It's in Chennai, was started up end of 2019. The project type is design, build, operate, capacity rather big, 45,000 cubic meters a day. And uh, there, uh, Wabak has got an, uh, an O and M contract from uh, 2019 to 2034. It employs an advanced multiple barrier system, and the, the reclaimed water is reused in various industries. Um, the raw water comes from the Koyambedu sewage treatment plant. The robot is secondary effluent. And then it is distributed via a distribution system, which is uh, plus 60 kilometers to three industrial clusters in the south, southwest of Chennai. Here you can see some of the industries, uh, for example, the automotive industries is Hyundai, Nissan, Yamaha and other companies such as Samsung, Saint-Gobain and, and Kone. So it, this plant secures the industrial water supply. And it's very important, imagine there is no water supply. The, this, uh, this loss in production is, is very, uh, pay, would be very high and and therefore, I, I always repeat uh, that the, the water supply security should be valued in feasibility studies. It's not only the, 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 the payback period. Payback periods, uh, the, the expectations with regard to payback periods are much too high. I, there should be longer accepted, uh, longer payback periods and water supply security should be considered in feasibility studies. Here the a simplified process flow diagram, uh, chlorine dioxide dosing, yes, the, I mentioned it already, the secondary effluent from the Coambedo switch treatment plant, uh, chlorine uh, dioxide dosing for pre-disinfection, then to BDD removal by sand filtration, again, disinfection by sodium hypochlorite and uh, basket strainer, ferric dosing, uh, desalination, ultrafiltration with ingle membranes, uh, desalination by reverse osmosis, reverse osmosis, degassing unit, and finally ozone dosing and distribution, as I mentioned. Here the ultrafiltration unit from Inge, the reverse osmosis unit from Tau, brackish water, RO membranes. Yes, uh, the, this, this reclamation plant uh, with its uh, multiple advanced multiple barrier system and uh, it's very close to the Wabak house is an ideal place for research and development. We will test hard COD or recalcitrant COD removal from RO concentrate from this plant, uh, from this RO unit um, with our biozone process. There are more and more COD limits for concentrate discharge to the sea. So COD removal in, in brines is important. And a new project is artificial human intelligence in water reclamation. It, this means advanced processed digitization and, and next generation control philosophy. We intend also to test high performance brackish water RO membranes. This means tests with high flux biomimetric full scale modules. Last but not least, um, the raw water quality and reclaimed water quality, it's 
major parameters, total dissolved solids, 1500 design value, actual values is approximately 1100, total silica, 40, actual value also approximately 40. Design value less than 70 for TDS, actual value is approximately 40. And uh, silica, it's below one, approximately 0.6 milligrams per liter. So it's working very well. Now I come back to Windhoek. It's the central water reclamation. It's a central water uh, reclamation facility for different industrial effluents from a brewery, tannery, a betua, beverage and chocolate production, and some municipal used water. The core technology, fine sieving or micro sieving, MBR, membrane bioreactor technology, UV disinfection startup was in 2014, capacity 5,000 cubic meters a day. Uh, also, this plant was uh, had high political attention. Uh, the, there is a boot contract, build, owned, operate, transfer between the city of Windhoek and the Ucham's special purpose, purpose company. Uh, contract period 21 years, and it's financed by the German Development Bank DEG, a subsidiary of KFW. And uh, the shareholders granted also loans to the special purpose company. The simplified process flow diagrams shows, as I mentioned, uh, as core technology, micro, uh, micro poor technology, it's micro screen, micro sieving, MBR, UV disinfection. The, the uh, clean water is uh, pumped to the Klein Windhoek River and uh, it's um, environmental augmentation. Here the nitrification tanks, membrane building, and the, in the membrane building, uh, you can see the, the MBR. Uh, there are four membrane trains. Submerged hollow fiber membranes are used. Membrane area 16 thousand square meters. The expected membrane life is greater than 10 years. So far it's in operation since seven years and the permit is disinfected by UV. Yeah, it's a CBIT 500D, here the inspection of the membrane after chemical cleaning. The UV disinfection unit, reclaimed water tank, Typical MBR permeate quality COD68 to BDD 0.1, total nitrogen 10, ammonium nitrogen less than 0.1, nitrate nitrogen approximately 6. Reuse applications or options for the future. It's mainly augmentation of the ephemeral Klein Window River, road construction in road construction for dust control. This is already has been done. Then in the future, golf course irrigation, brewery, tannery, for non-product reuse, of course, also in the poultry farm. And here the Klein Windhoek River, some 50, 60 kilometers downstream, there is a drinking water catchment area. So it's perhaps a kind of de facto portable reuse. And here during the drought in end of 16, kettles were drinking this water and this was forced by the severe drought. It's not very often, but this was a result of the drought uh, in the end of, of 16. Here, Dust control, control in road construction. And yes, that was the Windhoek Ujams case. Now I would like to switch to industrial water reclamation and recycling to Gujarat. It's um, the purified terephthalic acid facility from Reliance Industries. Purified terephthalic acid is the monomer for polycondensation of PET. PET is used, for example, for plastic bottles. 
here a simplified process flow diagram, pretreatment by upflow anaerobic sludge blanket uh, technology, biogas is reused. Um, then coagulation, flocculation, lamella clarification, MBR, then polishing by ion exchange, nickel cobalt has to be removed because these uh, elements are catalysts in PED production. Um, low organic uh, used water treated by dual media filtration, ultrafiltration blended and desalinated by RO. The RO permeate is reused as boiler makeup. Some design parameters, COD 6,500 in the raw water, 1,600 in the USB outlet, less than 30 after MBR and in our raw permeate less than 10. TDS 2,900, the raw water 100 in the RO permeate, which is reused as boiler makeup, not, uh, sorry, uh, cooling tower makeup and here are some photographs, USB reactors, MBI aeration tanks, MBS kit, filtration cells, reverse osmosis process unit. And this is a very big project. Um, this means more than 40,000 cubic meters a day of permeate. So it's a very nice industrial water reclamation plant. Next topic, agricultural water use in the European Union. There are nearly 800 water reuse applications in, in the EU. 40% is, uh, is uh, reused in agriculture. Uh, municipal used water remains an unused resource. In 2015, only 2.4% of treated urban used water was recycled or reused. There are several national regulations in France, Spain, and so on. And a, a very important milestone in May last year, the EU regulation on minimum requirements for water reuse were adopted. The regulation focuses on agricultural irrigation. However, other purposes are also encouraged. The regulation has to be transposed into national legis legislations by June 23, uh, the regulation focuses, of course, on microbiological risks, depending on the irrigation scheme and type of crop. There are four classes of irrigation water. And for class A, best quality class, validation is necessary. And this is very stringent. So you can see the four classes depending on the crop cat category, irrigation methods. Class A, for example, has to meet 10 uh, colony forming units per 100 milliliter of E. coli, 10 BOD, TSS, 10 milligrams per liter, turbidity, uh, 5 NTU. And for class A water, which is used for crops which are consumed raw, a validation is necessary. So for E. coli, the log reduction has to be equal or greater than five. For coliphages, six log reduction. For Clostridium perfringens, spores, uh, equal or greater than five log, uh, logs. Uh, this means that um, probably uh, the, the appropriate technology for class A water will be membrane technology because these spores are not so easily inactivated by disinfection. So a membrane would be the right technology. Spain is number one water reuse country in the EU, 40% agricultural irrigation and in Murcia uh, they are producing uh, they have very intensive agriculture they produce 2.6 million tons of fruits and vegetables per year uh, they have to use all 
Available Water Resources, the 93 used water treatment plant, tertiary treatment, mostly with flocculation, coagulation, lamella sedimentation, filtration and disinfection. There are already nine MPRs. They are very proper technologies for class A water. Most important issues, food safety, microbiological and chemical parameters, degrees of salinity and the affordability of water reclamation. Uh, the ESA Moor, the utility of the Murcia region concludes that the new EU, EU regulation is rather strict, but can be met without reasonable efforts, except the five log removal requirement for Clostridium perfringens spores. And as I mentioned, um, class A water will require for validation, especially membrane technology. So now, last case in Saudi Arabia, reclaimed water from municipal effluents for urban and environmental reuse. It's a water reclamation plant under construction during SARS-CoV-2 crisis. The client is Marafik Power and Water Utility for Chubel and Yanbu. The contract value is 120 million euro. The, the process is a simple process, secondary and tertiary treatment. Uh, and disinfection with sand filtration, big capacity, 120,000 cubic meters a day, and the ir irrigation water quality standards from the Royal Commission's Environmental Regulation of 2015 have to be met. For example, uh, fecal coliforms, only one most probable number, a colony forming unit per 100 milliliter, and uh, residual chlorine has to be greater than 0.5 milligrams per liter. Water reuse applications are irrigation, of course, of green areas, and also augmentation of these wetlands, which is an important birds sanctuary. So it's an, a nice environmental reuse application. Um, it was a, a real challenge during this, this, the COVID crisis uh, the progress is more, more or less, the, the progress of construction more or less according to the project scale use schedule. And very, very important, already 4.5 million safe man hours without any in incidents achieved in June 21. There are 1,000 people on the construction site. It's the climate is hot and wet. And one year ago, there were five positive SARS-CoV-2 cases, 75 people have to be quarantined as first and secondary and second contacts. And fortunately, there haven't been no positive cases anymore since, since June 20. And uh, here some photographs of the plant. Activated sludge tank this is from March 21. This is from June, secondary clarifier. Rapid gravity sand filters is from March. This is also from March, chlorination contact tank. With this process, this process can be used also for agricultural irrigation. We easily can meet class BCD from the EU regulation. And so, that's uh, a nice, simple process also for agricultural reuse. Now I come to the conclusions. Large quantities of fresh water can be saved by water reuse and recycling. This boosts the water supply reliability, which can be endangered by water stress. The environmental impact, e.g. The, the release of antimicrobial resistance, is re reduced by water reuse through these advanced multiple barrier systems. In many cases, water reuse is cheaper than other options. Uh, other options such as transport from distant sources or fresh water from the public supply. The undisturbed functioning of water supply, especially during a crisis such as this COVID crisis, is essential. In Windhoek, we had no shutdown. For example, and this is drinking water supply, um, um, and, and this can be guaranteed by properly designed, resilient multi-barrier processes and professional owned them. 
And finally, it can be concluded that water reuse and recycling rep represent essential element for a circular economy and for sustainable development. I thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Joseph Lanstiner. Thank you for sharing uh, so much of information. I'm, I'm sure you know our attendees will find that useful. Now, uh, in the interest of time, uh, we would like to open the session for any question answers. In your chat box, you can put your questions. I'll just read out those questions, and Dr. Joseph Lanstiner will be able to reply to most of your queries. The first question is from A. Nagarajan. Uh, A. Narayanan, I stand corrected. Uh, Dr. Joseph, could you elaborate the nature of media's iodine value about biological active carbon filtration and what are the unique differences from Absorption active carbon filters. Yes, um, the biological activated carbon filtration is uh, for uh, the for the fixed bacteria for fixation of of bacteria, and of course the iodine value is 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 quite different, but. Uh, I'm not, not quite sure about the exact figures, but um, the, the biologically activated carbon is, is a carrier material and, and the, the activated carbon filter, adsorption filters are for adsorption of residual, residual micropollutant and so of course it's quite different. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Joseph. The next question is from Dr. Nukur Bahadur. What is the cost of treatment in Coimbedu wastewater treatment plant in Chennai? And also, she is keen to know what is the resale water, what is the resale water to the industry? Yeah. Um. I know these figures, but I'm not sure whether this is confidential. Uh, Rajneesh, you, you know this better than I. Um, so basically, um, Chennai Metro sells uh, the water to Zipcot, and Zipcot is, is distributing the water to these uh, industries I have shown. And I do not know whether this figures has been published. Um, if you agree, Rajnish, I mentioned these figures. I, I'm not sure whether, whether it's, it's, it's confidential. Yeah, you may. Okay. Uh, Chennai Metro sells uh, the, the cubic meter for 65 rupees to Zipcot, and Zipcot is, 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 is selling it to, to, the, to the industries. So Chennai Metro, 65 rupees to Zipcot. That's the, the price Chennai Metro is asking for. And of course, uh, the, the industries pay a bit more. It has to be distributed and, and so on. So they pay 80, 80 rupees. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. Uh, the next question is, could you confirm the make of ozone generator? I think uh, we don't have it ready. What is the make of ozone generator? Uh, it's, um, it's from the company Ozonia. Ozonia, yes. It's a subsidiary of of the of Suez and Suez uh, has been acquired by Veolia, as you know. <clears throat> uh, 
The second question is also from Imran. Uh, he wants to know what is the dosage of ozone? Yes, um, we have pre-ozonation. Pre-ozonation, a few, if, uh, less than, than one milligram per liter, let's, let's say 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams per liter. That means uh, it's for pre-oxidation, pre-disinfection, and in main ozonation, we have to meet a, a contractual CT value. Ozone is dosed on different uh, locations. And a CT value of 20 has to be met. So it's uh, several milligrams, uh, five to... On, on different places, uh, five to, I would say, five to 10 milligrams per liter. But decisive is the CD value in order to safely inactivate virus. Virus is, is very dangerous because uh, by virus disease, you can, you can die immediately. Of course, there are disinfection byproducts. It's, it's bromate, but uh, the bromate formation is not so high and uh, it, it would be, uh, it, it's then blended and uh, the WHO standard for bromate is, is met. But very important to have a, is a, a hygienic safe water. That's, that's the most important thing. Therefore, a relative high amount of ozone. Thank you, doctor. Uh, the next question is from Shobi Aravind. How is the antibiotic resistant bacteria controlled and ensured that it is completely eradicated? Um, it's, as I have shown, the bacteria um, are, are not anymore available uh, uh, after the main ozonation. There are no resistant bacteria anymore. Um, the genes which can transfer uh, resistance to other bacteria um, are removed by ultrafiltration. So you need well, the residual genes by ultrafiltration. And this means uh, you always need a multiple barrier system and we proved that this uh, AMR is safely removed and, and, and in such a DPR system we were the first. We are leading in, in this area by, by appropriate research and development and of course there are no standards. There are no standards yet but a proactive approach is always important in order to, if let's say the press is, is asking for this topic, you can say we have done it already two years ago. And we fortunately, we saw in this plant that it is removed reliably and no additional treatment steps are necessary. Also, I showed ozone, and UF uh, have the, the highest removal efficiency for antimicrobial resistance. Thank you, doctor. The next question is coming from an anonymous attendee. The question is, what is the quantity of waste generated from water reclamation plant? And in, how it is handled? Yeah, in, in Windhoek, uh, we have backwash water, what, what is not recycled, because in, in backwash water from uh, the, the dual media fil fil filters, you can have some protozoa. It's, it's pumped to a nearby wastewater treatment plant. And it's since here's a, a question of optimization to, to increase the recovery, and um, at the moment, 
95, more than 95 percent of the, or let's say the, the, the waste is less than 5 percent in the Windhoek reclamation plant. Um, Backwash water from activated carbon and, and, and UF is recycled to the, to the raw water, but um, from flotation, of course, the, the sludge is also pumped to, the, to this nearby water, uh, wastewater treatment plant. So we have sludge from flot dissolved air flotation and backwash um, from backwash from the sand filters. And we could further increase the recovery by, let's say, submerged membranes or even pressure-driven membranes. Uh, we, we did already tests uh, possible. So it's still a topic to further increase recovery. So more than, at the moment, more than 95% is the recovery. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, next question comes from Venamara Kumar, Venamara Kumar. Now, I think I will take this question because it talks about how we as a company can affect the government policies to be more effective towards water reuse and reclamation. I think uh, the only way we can, you know, make the policies more effective the government policies is by demonstrating that you know the utility of recycled water and not only recycled water as we take wabak today we have demonstrated a resource recovery model where all the treated wastewater is used as a resource so all the three components the liquid air and liquid gas and solids are recyclable and have commercial value. So we have recycled the water for industrial use, for agriculture use. We have, in the same plants, we have demonstrated that all the biogas which is generated, the H2S is scrubbed and the methane is fed to the gas engines for generating captive power which substantially reduces the cost of operations. And also the sludge can be dried, it can be you know, converted into a manure, it can be converted into a fuel, or even at times we have cases where you know, the dried sludge is being taken by some of the brick or cement manufacturers. So the, so the only way is that you know we have to demonstrate it the technology is available and it makes a successful business model so that treating wastewater does not remain only a, a you know liability the treated or the wastewater which is generated is treated as a resource and a business model is established around that and we have a lot of successful studies to demonstrate that. Thank you so much. Yes. The next question is, how much is the overall power consumption by water reclamation plant? Depends, of course, on the, on the process. In the new Korean Gap water reclamation plant, Without high lift pumps, it's approximately 0.9 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. So it's not so high. This is for you have we have ozonation, ultrafiltration, and so on. 0.9 and another 0.4 for the high lift pumps. And for Koyambedu, it's the, for, for the RO system, it's approximately 0.4 to 0.5 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. And uh, for, the other, for the other system, let's say UF and, and the other units, it's 1.3. 1. 1. 
So in total, I would say it's 1.8 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. So it's, it's not so much. If you compare it with seawater desalination, it's half, half of seawater desalination. Thank you, doctor. I think uh, uh, as we have already, you know, overshot our time, uh, we would like to conclude this session. If there are any further questions, any queries, you can write to us and we'll be more than happy to respond to you individually on that. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Lansteiner, for making this session so informative, so knowledgeable. I'm sure all the attendees who have attended uh, this session would have benefited out of it. Also, I would like to uh, you know, uh, inform uh, all our attendees or the people who have missed out on this particular session because of other commitments that very soon the entire recording of this particular session will be available on a recorded version will be available on our YouTube uh, link and uh, we will be sending that link to all our you know, uh, attendees who have registered and have not been able to attend this. Thank you so much, Dr. Joseph Lansteiner. Thank you everybody for attending this session. We look forward to more knowledge sharing sessions with all of you in the near future. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was a great pleasure. Have a nice evening.